Okay, here we're going to look at the effects of osmosis on cells. Three important key terms you want to be familiar with are hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic, and how these relate and how these change the structure of the cells and how some can lead to potentially cell death and some basically just not functioning properly and what isotonic is here. We'll look at each of these in detail and how they relate. So starting with that same image and defining our three key vocab terms here. Isotonic is the one in the middle. This is where solutions uh, with the same solute concentration as that of the, the cytosol. Remember the cytosol is the interior portions of the cell. So here we see wa water moving in and water moving out. Nice equal in equal out isotonic. Hypertonic solutions having greater solute concentrations than that of the cytosol where water leaves the cell causing this basic shrinkage to occur. So hypertonic, the solution here, having greater site concentration than that of the cytosol. Water leaving the cell, causing it to shrink. So this is basically causing this shriveled appearance to occur. The opposite of that would be hypotonic. This is where solutions have lesser site concentration than that of the cytosol. Water enters the cell, causing it to swell. And what it says here, potentially lice, causing them, in this case, this cell is lysing or it's exploding, basically breaking apart. Too much water is coming into the cell, causing it to swell up. That's why it looks a little more plump than this one, causing, in this case, it to lice or break apart. So these are three kind of situations we want to think about and how these cells are being affected. Now, those were animal cells. Those are actually red blood cells. Here we're looking at a plant cell. Now, plant cells have this exterior cell wall, so they have something a little different. Plant cells remain turgid or firm. This is generally the healthiest in the hypotonic environment, where the uptake of water is eventually balanced by the elastic wall pushing back in the cell. So here, turgid, we have water coming in, this large vacuole is um, swelled up here, a lot of water containing it, but that's able to keep and maintain itself because plant cells have a cell wall. Remember in our hypotonic situations, if we go back to the red blood cells, this was the concept where they could ache and lice. So plant cells, a little different. They have that cell wall and they can hold that pressure and it keeps plants upright and vertical. Isotonic, they become flaccid, where they can start to wilt a little bit. And yes, we're having some water come in and out, and that's okay, but we notice it's a little flaccid. Then here in extreme case, our hypertonic, where a lot of water is leaving, this is basically where the plant is really wilting down pretty heavily, where it can burn or cause severe damage to it. So hypertonic, what do these situations look like? Hypertonic, osmotic flow out of the cell. So here's our solute molecules. Here is our cells here. Um, in this case, a great example of this, if you take a cucumber and you pickle it, well, that pickling solution, the brine solution, high amount of salt concentration in that liquid environment, causing our wonderful looking nice streamlined cucumber to become like a pickle, to shrivel up. And that's what's occurring here. Water molecules are leaving the cell, in this case, to try to dilute the solute, or in this case, the salt that's located on the outside. And that's what causes the pickle to get that shriveled look versus a cucumber. Hypotonic now is the opposite of that. Osmotics flowing into the cell, the soil swelling up. In this case, there's more solute molecules inside the cell than there are outside. This could be if you put something in pure water, distilled water, free of ions. This can cause cells to swell up, and if they're red blood cells, they can ultimately um, lice or break apart. Isotonic has an equal movement of water molecules both in and out of the cell. This is not the same as no movement. So the solute molecules are the same on the inside and the outside, and water is coming in and out at the same rate. Each molecule in results in one molecule out of the cell. There appears to be no change. So this one that says no osmotic flow, this can be kind of misleading if I put it down here. No osmotic flow, most people think that's ah, just not going to move. Everything's going to stay where it is. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Water can be coming in, but for every molecule that comes in, one comes out. For every molecule that comes out, one comes in. So this is where we get that equal movement. Okay, Not no movement, but equal movement. So it appears there's to be no change. 
get hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic shown in those same images. Remember, hypertonic is like those salt solution causing it to kind of shrink. Hypotonic, the cell is swelling. And isotonic, it's um, equal movement in and out. Looking at our red blood cells, you notice this is the proper shape they should have. If they swell too big, they can lice. And if they shrink and shrivel here, they're just not going to be able to perform their proper function. This is how they look in real world. So we can see a little bit harder to tell on an initial quick look. But isotonic, let's start with that one. That's how they should look. And these are red blood cells, RBC is their abbreviation. This is how they should look. We notice in comparison to how the properly formed red blood cells look, our hypotonic ones are definitely larger, definitely plump. No real kind of depression in the middle, uh, no biconcave disc, actually reducing the surface area in this case. Um, if they don't lice, they're just, they don't have as great a surface area to volume ratio. Hypertonic, notice that they're kind of getting this jagged appearance. This jagged appearance is because they're shrinking. They're shrinking down, and that's what's causing the jagged appearance, the collapse of the cell. Okay, a lot of water is leading the cell, causing it to kind of shrink and shrivel up there. Here's an example of what's unseen under the microscope, where we have um, water exiting the cell, causing it to shrink, um, water entering the cell, causing it to swell, and this is how it should look here. So again, flipping back, our hypotonic is that swelling that would be represented as here. Here where it's all equal, if you flip back, that's how they should look. That's isotonic. And shriveling up would be hypertonic, example here. So hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. Key terms to be able to know and understand. Plasmolysis is when the cell loses water in a hypertonic solution. So this is looking at a plant cell. We're looking specifically at the vacuole here. Vacuole here, hypotonic, all nicely swelled up. We're notice we're going into that iso to hypertonic here where that water is leaving the cell at a greater rate. And we're noticing that vacuole is getting smaller. That's what we represented here. Here it's taking up like 90% of the cell. Here it's a lot less. And it could even get in the worst situation where it takes up even a smaller portion of the cell. Important in our body systems, um, the hydrostatic and osmotic pressures in our kidneys. Hydrostatic pressure is water pressure. And this filtration that our kidneys go through and do is passage of water and solutes through a membrane through hydrostatic pressure. Pressure gradient pushes solute-containing fluid from higher pressure area to lower pressure areas. Just a brief overview here, the filtration process that the kidneys go through is based a lot on this osmotic pressure. Um, this is why it's, there's a lot of folds here, a lot of membranes. Um, so we want to excrete um, certain waste products. We want to retain some water and some other things also. So the kidneys, throughout all these little areas here, and I can go into great details here, um, go through this osmotic pressure, this hydrostatic pressure, build up of water pressure that's occurring, allowing us to properly filter um, our blood and other fluids to be able to excrete pure waste products. Hope that was helpful.